Well, I All absolutely right, love good. this show. Um, six seasons, Thanks, crazy Jeff. that it's ending um, during a pandemic. What was the final table read like via Zoom? Who got the most emotional? Um, everything like that. Lauren, Lauren texted me making fun what Lauren you remember yes. it better what did, what did you write while we so were- I so we're in the Ben and I text during almost anything like it's shocking we haven't already texted during this interview um but we were we, we were texting during the table read and I was just like are people starting to cry and then literally and he was like well I just did and then literally it was like at that moment I had started to cry and I realized <laughs> I was projecting <laughs> my own judgment, which wasn't real. It was, yeah. um, I've been trying to build a wall because I don't want to feel the emotions. Um, but yeah. then the joke was, is that it, at the end of the day, if you asked who got the most emotional, it, it, I do think it was me because I couldn't get through that, the final Dina Glenn scene. I, I couldn't even get the lines out. So yeah. And there's there's a moment, the moment, uh, you, Dina and Glenn also start, like they are the ones that take an ax to the floodgates in this finale. Um, Lauren, you've, have you haven't no. seen it right yet? You've seen a lot, you've seen pieces, but it, it, you guys have, um, mm-hmm. right? Okay, cool. It begin like when they have that moment together uh, and, and Mark says, you know, take care of her, take care of the girl for me. What is take it care going? of the old gal for me. Yeah. Oh God, it, it, it destroys, it destroyed me and I'm mm-hmm. sure it'll destroy other people. And then from that moment on, it's just sad. It's just tears until the uh, logo at the end. So um, yeah. <laughs> It's it's an emotional thing yeah. for it's just as if not more emotional for us uh, reading the, doing the table read shooting it and watching it uh, than it is for anybody else. Yeah. Now there's been now there's been a lot of bad behavior with customers throughout the whole season and in the whole series itself. I was wondering if your character had the opportunity to interact with any of those customers, which one would you have chose? I think Dina would have really liked to have had words with the woman who bit the candle, the woman who smelled the candle and then took a bite. Mm -hmm. And then she put it back. And I think that that for Dina, I mean, look, all of them offend her on a deep, deep level, but that one I think would have really, you know, you, you bite it, you buy it type situation and it's not food and also her own health. You shouldn't be ingesting that many parabens. um, Certainly not from cloud nine. (laughs) Uh, so that one, definitely, I think Dina would really have liked to, to don't pardon the pun, sink her teeth into. <laughs> didn't we, didn't, wasn't Apollo Ono one of the yes. interstitials? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I feel like that would be Jonah's, that would be an easy one for, for me, just because he just showed up in an interstitial and that was it in an episode for the Olympics a thousand years ago. Mr. Oh no, I could see that whole interaction. Jonah being like, hi, not to be a bother. Um, I just listened to your thing you did with um, on, on NPR. Yeah, exactly. Yep. How much of yourself have you actually poured into your character? Like oh. we did roles like this and you know, it's phenomenal. It becomes legendary. You all are a staple in my mom's house. So my mom is going <laughs> to watch this interview. And yes, I need you all to say hi to my mom. Of and course. So y'all could just say hi, Sheila. Hi, and Sheila. Thank you, thank you. How much of yourself do you actually pour into a character like this? You know, because now you're coming to the end of it and you really gave it to your gave it your all. So when you take on roles like this, how, how important is that for you to be relatable to the character? Well, first of all, hi, Sheila. Thank you so much for watching the show. We appreciate you. Secondly, um, you know, I think what's interesting, a great example of that is in the original script, the Mateo character was a Latin gang type. And (laughs) Nico came in and played Mateo as we know him. And they were like, oh, yeah. So I think that that's a great example just, just to kind of like give some context for I think that there's parts of all of us that kind of like by osmosis came into these characters. And as the writers kind of started to pick up on it, they just started to kind of, it kind of became these weird Frankenstein versions of ourselves. And I know that people often like to, you know, comment about how, I mean, Ben himself has said that the Jonah character by the end just became a walking roast of, of Ben Feldman. Um, But I think that it's because, uh, you know, when you when you bring that realness in, I think it does kind of lend some credibility and, and that feeling of realness to those characters 
that then allows you to kind of like let them do the kind of crazier things. Do I want to say I'm like Dina? No. Do I find myself in moments where I am a hundred percent her? Of course I do. So, I mean, I don't know what you feel, Ben, but I, I do feel like for most of us, I feel like there are parts of us that literally have found, even with Sandra, I feel like Coleco, there's moments oh, yeah. where she'll get like, you know, she'll get like, have a specific like sassy moment or something. And I'm like, oh, that's totally her. Like, I feel like over the course or, of time, it just started to happen. The, after the table read, we all gathered to take a picture of, of the, ca the whole cast to take a picture and only Kaliko was gone. And so we had to Photoshop her in. Oh, the that's picture. right. Yeah. It's like, it was very... <laughs> Sandra, um, I would say that uh, to w your question actually points to what better actors, a lot of the people, but particularly Lauren, are than, than me. Um, because, yeah, there are elements of Dina in Lauren, but you really have to dig for them. And, uh, and sh when you meet her, Mark, too, uh, all the Canadians, um, you go, oh, wow, these are com completely different people. And it spe speaks to them as actors and also as uh, Im improvisational artists. Um, because when if you spend any, if you spend five minutes with me, you'll realize that I've done no acting for six years. <laughs> <laughs> it has been an amazing six seasons, and we're sad that it's going to be ending soon. And I'd like to know from the both of you, what is the one thing you will take with you from this experience after six amazing seasons? <sighs> Um, I got a jacket that says Superstore on it. <laughs> Does that count? Yeah, that's no, I, okay, I'll, wardrobe I'll go. Wardrobe might be looking for that. They have to do an audit. Wardrobe might be yeah, yeah. That's right. That's, true. that's right. Um, no, I'll take, I mean, look, I used, and Lauren did too, uh, this uh, this experience. Look, first and foremost, these people are now family. The The people that you guys are talking to today, the, the people in the, in the opening credits, these are now family and will be for life. And that is obviously the number one thing that we'll all take away, I think. Um, uh, except for Colton. Colton doesn't like anybody. Um, but I think understanding a show and television in general from, uh, from a more of a zoomed out perspective, from a, from a behind the scenes backstage perspective, for Lauren and I particularly, and Mark uh, as well, for me, I directed a few and Lauren wrote and, and it's being able to kind of zoom out. You know, when you're acting, you're, um, it's kind of like a swim meet, you know, you're, you're aware of everybody else and you can see what they're doing and you can see, you're really kind of focusing on what you're doing and making sure that you keep your head, head above water. Um, but writing and directing is more like is, is sitting up there in the lifeguard chair uh, watching and you get to see how incredible all these people are and how the sausage is made to introduce a completely different metaphor that's useless in this uh, answer. So that's what I have to say about that. Bye. Are you on? I think, you know, honestly, like, the number one thing, and I, I've said this a lot over the past six years, but you, as an actor, you know, you go in and you have to do a lot of different jobs. And, and usually those jobs last a very short amount of time. And you make varying connections to varying degrees with, with people and stuff like that. But you can be on shows with people and have a great time and the show will be fine and it run or it not. But once in a while, I think, and, and this is what I learned from Superstore, once in a while you get one where stars align and it's just special. Like it really is. And, and that's not to say that I'm like, I will never have, have fun on a set again. You <laughs> I'm won't. not saying that, but it's, it's, this is, it's just a special one. Like from the very first day, from the very first table read, it was just like, this is different. Like, Everyone gets along. Everyone is so funny. There are no weak links. There's no common enemy. There's no sort of like, you know, because some casts will like try and find one person that it's like, oh, that person's the bad guy. There was none of that, you know? And it's like, we got to improvise for those of us, like Mark and I, especially, and Colton too, you know? And they use it. Like it became something that was bigger than just the amazing accomplishment of booking a network television job. It became a true creative collaboration where it felt like the funniest joke won, no matter who came up with it. And we were all working on this thing together with people that we genuinely love. And I just don't think that those come around probably that many times in a career. So that is the, the big thing to take away. Well, you two are blessed to be on an amazing show. One of the rarest NBC comedy for last this long. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, with the way the TV is moving, who knows how many more that we'll have that will last this long it's it's not lost on me anyway that it was again like it was such a such a special piece of time
Yeah, six seasons, and also for the most part, to do twenty-two episodes during a lot of those yeah. seasons. I just, I don't. I, there's, there is no way any of us are going to experience something to that degree again. No. I don't think. Well, it's obviously more than just a comedy. Um, how would you like the show to be remembered by audiences and its legacy years from now? Obviously, you have a lot of political and social justice storylines. You also did. Yeah, but Lauren, you said this. You said this earlier, and but I and I'm going to now make it my own. Um, mm -hmm. But but I've also said it. I think that I think to me one of the important things about the show is that it is a, a time capsule uh, for a particular time in American history um, or or Western history. I don't know if it's just American, um, but it's it's. I think it's a something that you can look back on. People can watch it 10, 20, 30 years ago and get some semblance of an idea of kind of what we were all going through, what the current kind of zeitgeist, both politically and culturally, it was happening. Uh, in America uh, for the working class primarily at this time. And, and that's something that I'm really proud of. Yeah, it's not like watching an old show and you're kind of delighted by the technology differences, like, oh, look how big those cell phones were or whatever. I think people will look back on this show and be like, wow, look at how they were talking about healthcare, um, how they, you know, they there was reference to abortion in an episode, how they were dealing with all of these social issues at that time on a network television show. Um, I think that it's, yeah, I think that that will be the takeaway, I think, for years and years uh, in this show. And that's being proven because people are just finding it now and stuff that was relevant that we were doing six years ago, people are, you know, totally embracing and excited about now. So to me, I think that proves that with this kind of time capsule feeling that stuff while timely, also ends up being evergreen. Those kinds and of other things. and other NBC comedies have have sort of done that as well. But we did it without ever looking directly into camera. <laughs> Very true. Touche, touche. Well, hopefully, y'all cloud nine points uh, translate to a whole nother store. I'm hoping that is the hope. <laughs> that is the hope. To waste six, to waste six years worth of points and rewards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was so close to getting a microwave, you have no idea. <laughs> oh <my gosh>. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna crumple up my application because I have to <laughs> call me. I really want to be head cashier and employee of the week. I was did aiming we, for it. Do we have head Everyone, cashiers? Everyone, you let me know when we're good. We're gonna wrap this up. <laughs> Thank you so much. Can't wait to see your next endeavors. Thank you so much for everything and even taking the time. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thanks, everyone. And thank you. you.